Hey kids. Today we're going to be talking about the use of rhetorical devices and the zeitgeist of Bud Light. <laughs> what is Bud Light, you might ask? You know what it is. Quit playing dumb. Ha! <laughs> Just kidding. It's beer. Before we jump into anything big, let's talk about a little bit of Bud Light history. Before Bud Light was being represented by the legend himself, it was originally known as Budweiser Light. It was first introduced in 1982 by Anheuser-Busch. I don't really know how to say it. Please don't mark me down. In this period of time that I like to call the light bulb, Bud Light's first slogan was, give me a light. The slogan that would be the beginning of one of America's most popular beers. The slogan actually wouldn't be recognized and grow big until the Super Bowl commercial in 1985 where Bud Light's main competitor, Miller Lite, was also released in a commercial. The following clip is the ad in the 1985 Super Bowl commercial. Give me a light. Bud Light. If you just ask for a light beer, you never know what you'll get. Uh, give me a light. Uh, Bud Light. Hold this, will you? So if you want the less filling light beer with the first name and taste, don't just ask for a light beer. Give me a light. Ask them to bring out their best. Bud Light! Bud Light. Because everything else is just a light. Strike. Now, after watching that illegally downloaded video, you might be thinking, hmm, that was dumb. But what you should really be thinking is, why did Bud Light do this? Mm, yeah, that's so weird. I wonder I wonder why they did that. If it hasn't been pounded into your skulls yet, it's so they can appeal to their audience. Hmm, that's really weird, Keith. Who's the audience, though, huh? Who else would it be, you goofball? It's for freaking adults. I mean, unless, you know, you're drinking or something. Right now, I might be thinking, then what's in the ad, Keith? Maybe you should have paid attention. I think the ad depicts people from all around. You know, you see a guy from a bowling alley, and you see a guy coming in from what looks like work, and you see a guy enjoying his night. You know, they're all just coming in to the bar to enjoy a cold one and relax. What's, what's so wrong with that? You know, nothing's wrong with that. And yes, to address the elephant in the room, I get it. Haha, <laughs> look, I asked for light, and I got light source. We'll get to that in a second. And by second, I mean right now. Uh, light has a few meanings in here. Like the light source thing, that's its own thing. But originally, light was just supposed to be like, hey guys, we're better than Miller Light. If you don't get it, well, Miller Light's name is, you know, Miller Light. And Bud Light's product was now Bud Light. So by this, they're creating this little shadow of, over Miller Lite saying, hey, you need a light, you know your guy, you know, you get a Bud Light. Now the second form of pathos in the ad is just the overall emotion behind football. I mean, you got beer, some friends, maybe a little bit of snacks, football. Uh, that's really about it, actually. But I mean, everyone's hyped up, you know, like, woo! Bud Light, baby. Like, yeah, you're really enthusiastic about beer, huh? Now, obviously, there weren't any form of statistics seen throughout the advertisement, so Logos is a little bit sketchy, but this is my interpretation of it. Now, typically, saying you want a light refers to having a lighter or lighten up something, right? But in the ad, you can see that they clearly want you to say Bud Light rather than saying, hey, I just want a light because you could, it could refer to many other things, but, you know, they want you to have a Bud Light. This makes logical sense to me because you wouldn't just go up to a bartender and say, hey, I want a light and expect the bartender to be like, oh, yeah, he wants a light. So maybe instead of being so inconsiderate, you can use more than a few brain cells. You Now, interpreting ethos in the ad was a little bit harder because uh, much like the guys in the ad, I have zero brain cells. But then it hit me. I've already said it previously. It's just dudes being guys. Bud Light wants to lower their standards to be like us. They don't want to be like, hey, I'm better than you, now drink my beer. They just want to be like, hey, everybody goes through it sometimes, let's drink a beer, you know? Time for the zeitgeist portion of the segment. Although the 80s were favorable by many, Mrs. Saxton, there were many ideas that were introduced by Ronald Reagan. 
Not only that, but a lot of movements from the 60s and 70s were still carrying over and becoming even stronger. The 80s can also be remembered for people's love for materialistic items and the consumerism caused by it. Hmm, what does this have to do with Bud Light? Not only was there a lot of political attention, but after the war and a recession, both parents often worked, which, you know, led to family tension. And what better way to release all of it than unhealthy vices such as drinking? Next era about to do is what I like to call the light era. This is Bud Light's campaigning in the 2000s. The following clip is another ad presented by Bud Light in the 2000s. Wait, 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 wait. How, how would you have done playing in the Bubble Boys League? Where is he? Uh, he's behind the net again. Go get him. We can't. We don't go back there. Look, his arms and legs are moving. He is smaller in person. Hey. Uh, 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 I think it had done pretty well. What? What did he say? Let me at him! Go ahead. You're not going to stop me? So, without further ado, let's break this down. Now, there are many things in the ad, but the main takeaways are that it appeals to most hockey fans and other sports lovers. But the biggest thing in here I would say is that Wayne Gretzky, a famous hockey player, is at a press conference and when a reporter asks, hey, what, do you, what, do you, what would you do if you were a bubble boys? And then, you know, he flashes to me, he's like, ah, he just goes off, you know, he's hitting the people in the faces and he's scoring the goals and everything. And uh, then it's like, hey, Bud Light. And for those of you who don't know, you know, Bubble Boys is not made by Bud Light, but it is an NHL sponsored uh, t gift, toy, utensil. I don't know. It's an entertainment thing. It's a little foosball, you know. And then Bud Light is obviously the main sponsor of NHL. So that's why, you know, they're doing it. After looking at the video, we can say that the pathos, pathos, whatever you want to call it, uh, is much like every other ad that we've probably uh, interpreted or analyzed throughout this entire week. You know, there's humor, typically a little bit of humor in most of the ads, but the main thing was, you know, it's sports. People always get riled up over sports. There's the hype behind the sports, uh, and I would, I think that's, you know, that stirs up emotion, so I consider that pathos. As for ethos, obviously, Wayne, the use of Wayne Gretzky in here uh, adds credibility because, hey, look at celebrity, uh, that, and um, the use of a uh, foosball table from the NHL, you know, like, hey, we got a hockey team that we're sponsoring here, and we got Wayne Gretzky. That's pretty good, if you ask me, you know. Now we're going to talk about the Zeitgeist. guys. Woohoo, yay, Zeitgeist. guys. Uh, man. 2000s, 2000s, what did the 2000s offer? They offered a whole lot. There was a bunch of technology, you know, ideals were advancing, politics, obviously. Um, you know, there was a war in Afghanistan, that was in 2001, but uh, technology was a big one, you know, cell, satellite cell phones, you know, those bricks, those giant things, they're amazing. But I also like to think that many of the things that we consider luxuries nowadays, that 2000s was the baseline for that, like, that's where it all it all started you know now what does this have to do with bud light the 2000s are often recognized as a pretty good decade right you know they listen just listen to the music that came out there are some bangers of songs that came out in like 2000s all right and the commercial itself is also like just a good time you know you're just going out to a hockey game with your dad or your mom you're just family you're having a good time right and they're kind of interpreting that with being like hey you get a bud light it's like a good time we're in the 2000s don't worry, it's almost over. All right, here's Era 3 and then add. Are we winning? No. See, it's so small from back here, I can't really tell. Look! It's the Bud Knight. It's the Bud Knight. We're saved. Yes. Dilly dilly! Time to do what must be done. I did it. Hey, Bud Knight, aren't you gonna fight with us? Oh, uh, a buddy of mine is having this 30th birthday thing. Oh, yeah, well, that's understandable. Hey, if you survive, come by. Probably won't happen, but you know, yeah. Yeah, that's true. You know what? Watch this. Bud Knight! Well, if somebody likes attention. Here's to the friends you can always count on. So this obviously appeals to adults, more specifically those that watch Game of Thrones. And the ad it obviously depicts the Bud Knight going around saving the day because everybody loves Bud Knight. 
and that's about it. Pathos obviously is going to be humor, but you could also say that Bud Knight or Bud Light in general gives you hope because they're like, oh, look, we have Bud Light's here, Bud Knight's here, yay. Uh, for Ethos, it's going to be Bud Knight himself. Bud Knight kind of became a joke after the entire ad, and more so like representative. And then there's obviously Game of Thrones because that was big at the time, so they capitalized on this and they represented Game of Thrones through Bud, Knight, Bud Light. As for logos, it's more of a lack of logos, much like the second ad. There wasn't a lot of whole statistics that were represented inside of it. There's not that big of a difference in the Zeitgeist 2010 to 2000. Technological advance was still being made. Uh, cell phones, animation, stuff like that. We're still developing um, animations you could see in the video. And a lot of social norms were now created. But entertainment was a giant thing. Uh, this was heavily influenced by Game of Thrones, like I said previously. So that is the connection between the 2010 zeitgeist and the ad. Overall, I wouldn't say Bud Light has shifted its demographic, more so added onto it. At the beginning, it was normal people, then it was sports, and now it's entertainment. But these are the rhetorical devices used by Bud Light. Thank you.